Hi there and welcome to this edition of Startup Central. I'm Nantara Rai in New Delhi working from home. This is the only show of its kind on Indian television dedicated of course to startup but also technology, innovation, disruption. If it falls under the bracket of the new economy, it's here every weekday on ET now at 6 p.m. Ladies and gentlemen, our generation would never see a bigger event, a bigger disruption rather, I should call it, than the pandemic COVID-19. Sequoia, for example, calls it the black swan of 2020. You could have never foreseen it. Whatever you do today, you will still remain underprepared for it. And the whole generation out there, which have perhaps uh, studied so much, are having sleepless nights, are so anxious about what the future holds for them. I'm talking about the class of 2020. Yes, everybody's anxious. But we, let's have a thought for once what the class of 2020 must be going through. Many of them have spent so much money going to Ivy League schools. Many of them have taken bank loans uh, to go for classes and to go and get degrees that they've always dreamt of. They're scared that will their degrees even be relevant in the post-COVID world. Campus recruitment is perhaps one of the biggest uh, fatalities of COVID-19. And this is something that Sundar Pichai, the boss at Google, spoke about uh, overnight. He was sharing a stage uh, with uh, Barack Obama, Michelle Obama, as well as Lady Gaga. And I'd like to quote uh, what Sundar Pichai told the batch of 2020 over here. You know, and Sundar Pichai is saying it, I'm sure it is certainly a word of inspiration that is coming in. So here I am quoting Sundar Pichai for you, for the class of 2020. Be open, be impatient, be hopeful. If you can do that, history will remember the class of 2020, not for what you lost, but for what you changed. You have the chance to change everything. I'm optimistic you will. The important thing is to be open-minded so that you can find what you love. So take the time to find the thing that excites you more than anything else in the world. My father spent a year's salary on my plane ticket to the United States. That's what it really took for Sundar Pichai to get to the US. And now, of course, uh, it's something a lot of us are dreaming of uh, for our children, what Sundar Pichai has achieved and of course the class of 2020 probably hoping to be the next generation's Sundar Pichai. He also said, the only thing that got me from here to there, other than luck, as it is a deep passion for technology and an open mind. That's Sundar Pichai, quote unquote, for you. Right, uh, with uh, that inspiration there, let's uh, now talk about our next, our first guest on Startup Central. It's Raghurat Sundar Raju, the co-founder and managing director at Health Place Technologies. You'll ask me why am I getting Raghuraj today? Well, first of all, in the midst of this pandemic, he's managed to raise money and he's doing something that's going to be very relevant, not just during COVID, but post COVID as well. And that's to do with health records. So here's uh, Raghuraj uh, now joining us on Startup Central. Hi there, thank you so much. Uh, congratulations, you've done a fundraise. I'll get to the fundraise in a bit, but do you want to tell the viewers of ET now what it is that you're doing to be relevant in these times and something that uh, a lot of experts are saying is going to be essential after COVID? Hi, Nantara. It is great to be on the show. Um, so uh, first of all, uh, you know, uh, thank you very much uh, for inviting me here. And uh, uh, so at HealthPlex, uh, you know, we are uh, we have taken it as a mission to be able to use technology to drive better health outcomes for patients in India. So uh, one of the uh, starting points for us to be able to drive that change uh, would be to start, uh, you know, from the doctor's clinics itself, right? So when the patients are visiting their doctors, if we can uh, digitally empower the doctors at the point of care so that they have a lot of, uh, you know, help in terms of understanding the patient's uh, treatment journey, what did I do for this patient and has it actually worked uh, the way I thought it will actually help the patient. All those things are now seamlessly in incorporated into our uh, in a software that we build for the doctor, which we call it as electronic medical record, right? 
and also um, you know interestingly what we have also done is uh, we have taken a view that you know software has to be a productivity enhancing tool for the doctors uh, as opposed to it being uh, overhead so we have used the state of the art machine learning tools to make sure that the software gets personalized to the practice the doctor has in addition to the various different specialties the doctors usually practice and just to give you an example uh, a doctor who is uh, treating a patient who has got a cardiac problem would need a different type of software as opposed to a so doctor who treats a uh, you know patient who has got some malignancies right so what we have done at healthflix is we have recognized that every doctor uh, is unique not just based on the specialty but also the type of practice that they have uh, cultivated over several years of their own practice so uh, putting all these things together uh, you know healthflix has built a state of the art uh, electronic medical record software uh, you know which is uh, highly smart highly clinically relevant which is actually going a long way in digitizing the heart of healthcare that is the orchestration of care itself so this is exactly what we do and we've been doing it for several years and uh, you know in the last uh, you know four and a half five years of the journey we have managed to get uh, 5500 doctors to embrace digital tool while they're treating their patients so this is a very uh, significant shift because uh, you know um, the software has to you know really make sense in the context of india uh, the infrastructure is uncertain the patient load is too much and uh, there is a lot of diversity that is uh, you know out there in our country and we uh, you know took it all and then we basically built the software from the ground up for indian conditions and then uh, today you know we are present in 183 cities and uh, you know in 20 states across the country right that was the journey until uh, covid uh, started and uh, post covid what happened was uh, you know technology in healthcare held a lot of promise this is not new right like it is something that everybody understood but what covid actually made uh, uh, you know helped in uh, realizing was that okay now doctors were okay to use technology to provide care and patients were okay to use technology to avail healthcare services so that sort of a fundamental shift happened uh, because of the lockdown and because of the pandemic and because of the fear that patients had that if I were to go to a clinic or a hospital, would I contract um, you know, any uh, you know, infection? So that is where technology in healthcare sort of made an entry into the collective concerns of the society. And then uh, we are now seeing a lot of uh, you know, acceptance. Uh, if you look at uh, technology penetration in every sector, uh, you know, health has been the, uh, you know, uh, last of the sectors to actually embrace technology. I think now everybody has now understood that it is paramount to, you know, look at technology without which it would be very difficult. So uh, post COVID, uh, what did we do? Uh, in addition to serving the doctors that we had before uh, COVID, we in addition, uh, we also got on board 15,000 more doctors who now use HealthPlex to provide, you know, uh, telemedicine services to their own patients so that, you know, patients who are otherwise uh, in dire need of follow up care uh, are not able to get because of the, you know, lockdown or perhaps, you know, because of the uh, fear that, okay, I might contract infection. So such a fear has been removed and now patients are able to get uh, care from their own trusted doctors by means of uh, HealthFlix platform. So this is what has changed, uh, you know, post uh, COVID. And this is the kind of, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, a trend that we see will uh, perhaps, you know, uh, continue even uh, after COVID because of the convenience angle, because of the fact that uh, you would be in a very good position to provide seamless care, irrespective of whether the patient is visiting you as a doctor in the clinic or hospital or sitting at home and then availing the consultation at the comfort of the home. Okay, I have to ask you one question as well, and it's very relevant in the times that we are in at the moment. Our uh, healthcare infrastructure has been exposed, so I should say the lack of health infrastructure is now for all of us to see. You talk about how you have 5,000 doctors on the platform and all of that. But, you know, and it's something I ask everybody I get from telemedicine on the show. If the best of doctors are right now COVID heroes and are fighting at the war front, what are companies like yours or whether it's Practo or eClinic and all of those, what, what is the quality of the doctors that you have? Yeah, um, so uh, at HealthFlex, uh, you know, we, uh, we take, take, took an approach of, you know, getting doctors, uh, you know, practice on a digital platform. It was not just a, uh, you know, technology medium through which they consult patients online. Uh, you know, it was important that we uh, start, you know, this particular trend of 
getting doctors to use software inside their clinics while their patients are sitting in front of them you know that sort of a trend can only be perpetuated if you got the best of best doctors embrace this uh, technology so by design uh, we went about actually getting doctors who were the key opinion leaders and uh, you know who were the who's who of the field and uh, you know who could be the pioneers in embracing technology because uh, it was important for us to go to uh, doctors like that and we have doctors who have graduated from aims pgi you know sgpj lucknow or uh, you know cmc well or jipmer you know you name the institute uh, you know the premier medical institute that is there in the country you have the graduates of those uh, institutions uh, you know using healthplex so uh, this is not something that we did today it is something that we did 4 5 years ago uh, with the clear intent of getting the important doctors to be using a digital platform so that they become examples to everybody else so the 5500 doctors and the additional 15000 doctors that we have got are today uh, you know the top uh, you know uh, physicians and doctors of this country okay and you know telemedicine is obviously the buzzword at the moment simply because you know who wants to go to a clinic right now who wants to go to a hospital right now you know it's what the prime minister also advised when he announced uh, way back for janta curfew that uh, you know and that was uh, before janta curfew on 22nd march don't go to hospitals and clinics unless it's absolutely necessary cancel your elective procedures all of that i also understand that perhaps telemedicine is here to stay it's a great way to make sure that we have a penetration of medicine and healthcare in the country but you know having said all of this what i want to ask you as someone who's building a firm you building healthplex you've had series b funding you've got jsw which are at kalari all on board can you tell me how each telemedicine startup how each telemedicine platform is differentiating itself uh no even before i get into the differentiations across the different platforms uh you know uh, telemedicine is a is a means by which you can also provide care so does it mean to say that every problem can be resolved using telemedicine obviously not the way we see at healthplex is if there is a patient who has got a particular problem due to which on an ongoing manner if the patient were to visit the doctor at least four or five times a year which typically happens in a chronic care uh, setup right if a patient has diabetes or hypertension they are expected to make regular visits uh, the idea is we can leverage telemedicine to ensure that you know a reasonably good proportion of those visits need not actually happen within the uh, hospitals instead that could be done at the comfort of your home so we need to take a very pragmatic view of uh, telemedicine uh, while it is a fantastic use case we need to find you know relevance in terms of you know what type of specialty are we looking at what type of uh, uh, you know uh, the diseases that it actually is best suited to actually you know come to the aid of the patients so if you add uh, you know two three layers of context and then you uh, incorporate that within the software then it has uh, truly uh, you know uh, amazing uh, benefit to be you know availed you know the thing is uh, easily 20 25% of all consultations that happen can perhaps be taken up on telemedicine but that is to say for a particular patient's journey let's say if, like i said out of four or five visits in a year two to three can uh, easily happen on uh, it can happen in the clinic or maybe one or two could happen on telemedicine so this is the perspective that uh, we need to have when we talk about telemedicine it's not a panacea right it cannot be a replacement for a in clinic or a in hospital visit lots of things have to be done uh, by the doctor in order to provide the right treatment Uh, like vitals have to be measured systemic examination has to be done physical examination has to be done but uh, these things don't need to be done during every visit so it has to be used in a very you know a uh, sensible manner so that is what i want to tell you uh, before we go about uh, you know uh, talking about different software platforms for telemedicine there are two types of software platforms uh, healthplex uh, you know we are helping doctors to provide telemedicine services to their own patients right so that is one approach we are a b2 b2 c company and uh, there are other companies which are directly you know reaching out to the patients and saying hey i have these doctors why don't you use our app and get consultation over uh, my platform so that is the difference here that uh, within healthplex it is the doctor who decides who is uh, eligible for telemedicine based consultation and who is not eligible for telemedicine based consultation because we felt such a decision must be done by the doctor 
and it is uh, uh, perhaps uh, you know uh, not something that we as technology uh, players can actually you know decide uh, upfront so this is the fundamental uh, you know difference uh, in the thinking about how healthflix looks at uh, telemedicine versus all the other uh, you know b2c players uh, that are out there So now tell me, how did you, how was your experience uh, of the latest fundraise? You got JSW Group, for example, uh, to part with uh, cash. How did that happen? Were these conversations happening pre-COVID and uh, they continued and now you closed it or did you realize the need for it because of higher traffic and all of that uh, during the lockdown? Uh, see, uh, Nayantara, no fundraise happens in a month. Usually it does not happen. It has its uh, late time. So we have been in discussions uh, and then all the, uh, uh, you know, uh, follow up uh, meetings and uh, calls, uh, you know, for the last, uh, you know, five months, four to five months. And yes, COVID happened. But uh, one of the good things is, uh, despite COVID uh, and also the uncertainty that is uh, surrounding the overall economy, uh, you know, the investors uh, reposed faith in what we are doing and the kind of uh, fundamental difference that we can actually bring to the country's healthcare. So uh, those conversations materialized and then we were able to conclude the fundraise. Uh, so this was something which had started prior to COVID itself. Obviously, but did, tell me a little bit and you know a lot of people tuning in will want to know. I understand that no fundraise can happen in 30 days, 60 days, all of that. But because, you know, the sector you're in, the product that you have would have seen much higher traffic, would have its entire growth uh, trajectory has changed. That would have been factored in. And, you know, I'm asking this on behalf of a lot of uh, young entrepreneurs out there who are looking to fundraise, just figuring out the art of negotiation in these uncertain times. Hey, uh, one of the uh, things that I would like to, uh, you know, advise uh, to the uh, uh, advise the entrepreneurs who are looking at fundraisers, you know, we need to identify investors who are going to back us on our vision. So yes, uh, today you look at uh, you know the significance uh, healthcare uh, technology in healthcare has uh, assumed uh, you know given the lockdown, given the fact that the mobility is limited, uh, various other things. But while this is a uh, you know a, a change that has happened, which will give uh, momentum to technology in healthcare, uh, which was supposed to have been done you know long back itself, right? So you should still be looking at you know choosing investors who are going to back you on your vision. Right. Uh, you know, some of the behaviors after COVID will remain, some behavior will uh, not remain. Right. So it is very hard to say, you know, six months later, one year later, what are those behaviors that will uh, persist and, uh, you know, that is going to be beneficial for you uh, and your company. So it is important to have a holistic view not just a view that could be uh, just characterized by the prevailing pandemic or the behavioral change that the prevailing pandemic has brought about so um, you know look at a look at a horizon you know uh, have multiple scenarios uh, in your mind uh, you know uh, post one year what are the possibilities post two years what are the possibilities what i'm doing will it be still relevant so what sort of an impact that we're going to be creating are our investors in line with uh, the kind of impacts that we are looking at driving these are uh, you know more important questions as opposed to you know telemedicine is booming online pharmacy is booming you know, those things are were supposed to happen uh, anyway if not uh, post covid it would have happened in the next two to three years right so this is what i would uh, you know look at uh, you know uh, telling anybody who is looking at a fundraise because it's a it's a long journey uh, you know you might have several such instances uh, you know which will come up so it cannot be just characterized by one or two things Okay, so with that, Raghuraj, here's wishing you all the very best. Thank you so much for being candid and a part of Startup Central. Thank you so much, Nandha. Thank you so much. Such a pleasure. Bye-bye.